Greetings, people loved by God, and welcome back to another episode of Examining the Divine Service, a weekly study of our liturgy found in our hymnal, the Lutheran Service Book. Last week, we concluded with the last part of the service of the Word with the offertory and the prayers of the Church. And now, we're going to move into the second part of the Divine Service, which is the service of the sacrament. So join me, your beloved vicar, as we examine and reflect on the beauty of our liturgy. The service of the word is focused on the proclamation of the gospel through the sermon and the exposition of the scriptures. The service of the sacrament is still focused on the proclamation of the gospel, but through the Lord's Supper and the unity of God's saints in their confession of faith. I'd like to share with you a quote from Dr. Joel Bierman, who is a professor at Concordia Seminary in St. Louis. He says this, Contrary to much popular thought, the sacrament is not just between Jesus and the individual. The pastor is not an insensible spiritual vending machine without responsibility for those who are receiving. The sacrament is Christ's presence, his gift to the church. And the church celebrates this gift in the unity of their confession. It is the celebration of that gathering of people. The pastor oversees the celebration and takes care that it is being shared by those who belong to that unity. This is his task. This is what it means to be a pastor. To do less is to shrink the responsibility of the office. While the body and blood of Christ are given to each individual person, which is a profound thing. What is even more profound is the fact that through this supper, through the body and blood of Christ, the members of the church are being made into one body. The one bread we share is making us one body and making us part of one Lord. And this is the great gift of communion. And why, as Christians, when we come together to celebrate Christ's victory over death and the devil, communion should be had. Because it communes us with the person who has given us this victory. Service of the sacrament can be divided into three parts. The first being the preface that contains the salutation and proper preface. Second, the administration, which is the giving of the sacrament to the people. And third, the post-communion, which is the congregation offering thanksgiving to God for giving them this meal. Today, we're going to look at the salutation from the presiding pastor and the response of the congregation to him. Much like the salutation from the collect of the day in the service of the word, the salutation of the service of the sacrament is pretty much the same. And remember... The salutation, in a practical sense, communicates a change in the service and that the congregation is being led to a new part of the service. When the pastor says, the Lord be with you, it implies that the Lord must come to us before we can go to him. As St. Paul writes in Romans 8, the Lord be with you and in you and help you to pray. The response of, and with thy spirit, It's the people asking a blessing upon the pastor who is presiding over the sacrament and pray that the Lord may give him a devout mind and guide him in the coming administration of the sacrament. If the salutation in the service of the sacrament goes a little bit farther and adds a few more sentences, and these are what we call the prefatory sentences, And they give instruction to how the congregation's devotion and attitude should be during the service of the sacrament. The pastor will say, lift up your hearts. And at this moment, the congregation's thoughts should be on nothing earthly, but on God as we offer him our prayers and praise for what is about to happen before us. And that is heaven coming down to earth. And we accept pastor's summons as we say back to him, we lift them up unto the Lord. Now, you may be thinking, well, this sounds like a bunch of works that the congregation may be doing. 
or about a lot about what we're offering up to God. Isn't the whole point of the divine service about God coming to serve man? Absolutely. And he does this through his word and sacrament. Our lack of focus or lack of reverence doesn't affect the efficacious nature of God's gift. Now, that doesn't mean we ignore reverence. That doesn't mean we avoid a respectful posture. Because true faith will recognize when God offers his gifts. And a common attitude of that is respect and devotion to God when he does this. These things are not laws, but it's the liturgy being a tool to prepare our hearts and minds for what is about to happen in the service. The pastor continues with, let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. Here, the pastor is putting into our minds a sense of the benefits Christ offers through his sacrament, and that we should pray to God in thanks for him giving us this meal. The people's response of, it is meet and right so to do, is an acceptance of this thankful mindset and the declare their readiness to join in the pre-communion collect, which is called the proper preface. Now, meat is not pronounced meat, like the meat of an animal. Meat infers a face-to-face -face meeting with the Almighty God, and that it is good and right to do this, for it is truly meat, right, to commune with God and become one with Him through this celebratory meal. Well, people loved by God, I don't want to make this video too long, so we're going to go ahead and stop here for today. Next week, we're going to get into the proper preface, which is the prayer we say right after these preparatory sentences. I'll be sure to give a brief explanation next week so we're able to see the connection between the two. So until then, the Lord be with you.